Hi, my name is Cami Mejia, and if you watched my last video, then you'll know that I was accepted into MIT's class of 2023. So, we'll start off with some basics first. I applied early action to the class, and if you're watching this, then you're here to figure out what my stats were that got me in. So, first of all, just to introduce myself, I applied as a biomedical bioengineering major. Now, MIT doesn't accept my major, so that doesn't necessarily have an impact. It just kind of helps you shape your essay for what they're looking for, looking for stats or extracurriculars that sort of surround that specific major. Though you don't always have to do that, as I'll explain later on. For some background, I am 17 years old. I entered school a year early, so I am younger than all of my classmates. I currently live in Southern California. I am Filipino and I'm a first generation student. I go to a private high school and there are no rankings aside from valedictorian and salutatorian, so we actually don't know what our rankings are. Now time for stats and things. Okay, so in terms of stats, my unweighted GPA was a 4.05. So I actually had above a 4.0 GPA because I think I got A pluses in my honors and AP classes, so that would actually bump up my GPA. I had a 4.88 weighted GPA. I took 12 APs in total, I took 8 AP exams, I got 4 fours and 4 fives, so I was counted as a national AP scholar. In terms of workload, I think I took a pretty typical course load. If anything, there were specific courses that definitely helped me stand out as an applicant. I took pre-calculus honors as a freshman. In my sophomore year, I took calculus BC and got a 5 on the exam in AB and BC subscoring. I also took linear algebra and differential equations in my junior year and passed both of those and also got college credit for it. And in this senior year, I'm currently taking discrete math. So I think my school's math program really helped me stand out as an applicant because I did have that advanced math behind me. Some other courses that we had was specific to my school's advanced science engineering program, which allowed me to take methodologies in science and engineering, biomedical engineering, organic chemistry, and engineering 102, which helped give me a strong background in STEM. Moving on to standardized test scores. <laughs> Woo! So I actually took the SAT and ACT only once. So in terms of scores, the first time I took it, and the only time I took it, I got a 1550 on my SAT and I got a 36 on my ACT. In terms of subject tests, I took two subject tests. I got a 760 on my Math 2 subject test and I got a 750 on my Chemistry subject test. Now moving on to what I think is probably the strongest part of my application, which are extracurriculars. So in terms of extracurriculars, I had strong leadership positions under my belt. So just to name off a few, I'll start off with sort of the mediocre ones first and moving on to sort of the bigger ones. So I was a member for three years of my academic decathlon team at school. We never really went past counties, which isn't all that impressive on applications, but it helped solidify sort of my knowledge and love for knowledge and learning, as well as gave me a leadership position of captain in my senior year. For two years, I was part of San Diego Zoo Global's Conservation Corps. I had a love for learning about animals, and originally I wanted to be a veterinarian, so I thought it would reflect well on me to sort of do it. Plus, I got to be at the zoo all day for free and got to go behind the scenes to do things. So essentially what Conservation Corps did, aside from doing that, is I got to walk around the park and help park guests, talking to them about relevant and current conservation issues, educating them on what these animals undergo every single day, and how they themselves can be a hero for wildlife. Life. Along with this, we actually traveled around the local San Diego area, participating in various conservation efforts throughout the area. One of the biggest ones, I think, for me was the Literacy Movement, a nonprofit organization I created with three of my friends in high school in my sophomore year. What we did was we planned the logo, designed brochures, essentially created a mission statement, and what we were going to do is we were going to raise book donations to bring to the Philippines to donate to three different schools there. We ran the book drive in April of, I believe, 2017, and we traveled to the Philippines in June, and we traveled to three different elementary schools where we talked to teachers, we talked to students, gave them books, supplies, and also participated in various food drives to help the students and the people there. This was a really important one for me, especially in terms of my essays, because it helps me sort of 
go back to my Filipino heritage, which I had actually a lot of trouble with growing up. Over the summer between my junior and senior year, I actually got the opportunity to intern at Boeing's Huntington Beach campus through an opportunity at my high school. For two months, I worked as an intern in the analytical chemistry department and got close with 79 other interns there, as well as the engineers that worked on that specific Boeing campus. That helped me give an edge in, term of, in terms of STEM because that sort of helped me define and explore what I wanted to do. While it wasn't directly related to BME, I got to explore mechanical engineering, chemical engineering and aerospace engineering, which I did write about in my essays. In the beginning of my junior year, I founded my school's Equality in STEM club, which essentially is a club dedicated to bringing more awareness to social injustices within STEM. We would have bi-weekly meetings that would discuss various topics between gender inequality within STEM, the wage gap, um, racial inequality, as well as the lack of women in certain fields such as computer science and whatnot. It was a really good way to bring awareness to things and also have me speak my mind and create a platform where we can empower minorities within the field. From there, in my senior year, I decided to do something more with the project and I created a mentorship between my high school and middle school where high school seniors would mentor middle schoolers with their science fair projects. This allowed us to create a tangible way for me to have an impact in STEM. Along with all these stats and extracurriculars, I also listed my YouTube channel actually as well as creating and writing my own original music which I submitted in my school as an extracurricular and I linked my YouTube channel in my MIT application. Now, award awards and accolades. So in terms of awards, I actually don't think I'm that much of a competitive student. While my awards are decent, they aren't the best. I didn't place in any of the Bio Olympiads, Chem Olympiads, or Sioli teams. I actually didn't participate in any of those, which kind of makes me a bit different than your typical MIT applicant. However, I did have a bit of weird sort of awards that I think might have helped me along the way. So my biggest one is actually an international award. The Literacy Movement, my nonprofit organization, was actually given a certificate of recognition from the Department of Education of the Philippines, which was a really, really big award for me. Then we have some other ones that helped me stand out and maybe showed my love for music, specifically my Champion of the Fall Out Boy Fund Award, which is essentially a contest where you submit a nonprofit organization of your choice and nominate a person of your choice to win where you show how you've impacted the community. So I nominated one of the girls who created the nonprofit organization for me and we ended up winning, getting free tickets to Fall Out Boy and actually meeting Fall Out Boy and them donating to the nonprofit that we run, the literacy movement. Along with that, I won various student of the years in my science, uh, in AP chemistry, science department, advanced science and engineering department, just minor things sort of at school. And then one of my other ones was in my sophomore year. We went to MSC, which is the National Measurement and Science Conference, and we presented to a panel of judges there. Our biomedical engineering class was actually split into groups, and my group ended up winning. So we ended up winning a national and school-wide award, which was the Certificate of Excellence in Measurement, Science, and Technology. Now moving on to letters of recommendation and essays. So in terms of letters of recommendation, I got three total. So what MIT requires you to do is it requires you to have a science one as well as a humanities one. So I actually asked my science teacher, she is my biology teacher, as well as club advisor, to write me a letter of rec, and she wrote me a very good one. And for the humanities, I had my AP Lang and honors English teacher write me that one. She had seen my creative side a lot and I wrote a lot of songs in her class and had some really interesting thought pieces in AP Lang, so I thought it was a really good idea to have her write it for me since she knew me so well. My third one was an optional one that I added and I had my Boeing advisor, the person who actually created and runs the high school internship program at Boeing to write it. We were actually relatively close and he's really nice and he helped me a lot throughout the process while I was at Boeing, so I thought it would be a good idea to have him there. Shout out to Eric. Oops. I keep breaking things. Essentially, I think that does wrap up my whole MIT application. If in the future you would like me to read or share my essays, I would be happy to do so. Just let me know down in the comments below. 
If you would like more tips in the future specifically pertaining to a certain subject area, whether it be standardized testing or essay writing, please let me know down below and I will do so. I really hope that this video helped and the next video pertaining to MIT should hopefully be CPW, which is Campus Preview Weekend. So if you decide to stick around, then thank you and I hope you enjoyed. This is a late addition, but also I have my own Discord server, so if you want to go down there to talk or if you have any questions about my process, you can ask in the channel or the servers down below. So check that out. Thank you.